The past year has been tough on all of us and not least on our mental health. We spoke to Kiki Martiri from spunout.ie to get an idea of just what impact lockdown has had and how we might have to readjust as restrictions ease. Even now we're unsure of the full effect the last year has had. I think we've all kind of felt that COVID has made everyone really sit with our discomfort in a wide variety of areas. So, you know, people are talking about, oh, I've experiencing mental health difficulties for the first time. And maybe that is true, but it's also true that we've just been made to kind of sit at home and maybe think things through or really have to sit with our feelings for a long period of time for the first time without typical distractions. And then on top of not having typical distractions, we also don't have the same coping mechanisms that we would usually have available to us. So we're kind of forced to confront some of our some of our underlying issues in a deeper way than we had before. And then on top of that, not able to kind of access the same coping strategies we would have had in the past. Nobody has been immune to the pressures of lockdown. And Kiki says many people with previously good mental health are now reporting symptoms. We're hearing from everyone that they're, they're more stressed, they're more anxious, or they're more depressed, or they're experiencing a lot more, um, you know, situational depression than ever before. And listen, like part of that is not, and not to be flippant, like it's just to be expected. Like we have to normalize it because these are truly, really like challenges, the likes of which we haven't faced before. And it would be genuinely shocking if we weren't being affected by it, like that would be strange. So part of it is just normalizing that, um, you know, we have to keep a balanced approach. We're genuinely just surviving and not thriving. And we're a community based species. Like we want to be in community with other people. We want to hug each other. We want to be around other people. We want to be in others' presence and connect. And we've been denied a lot of genuine ways of doing that and doing that in person. So the fact that the idea that it wouldn't have the toll that it's taking is, um, you know, unrealistic. The new balance of work and home life has been especially tough on many, with relationships suffering. Across our services, we're hearing a lot of talk about breakups or just relationship breakdown or tension. So even if um, our you know relationship isn't experiencing a breakup, they're really being challenged. We're doing a campaign in the next couple of weeks on you know mental health challenges kind of coming into this next stage of COVID, not that it's over, but what the next chapter looks like for us. So social anxiety as we kind of go back to some social engagements, you know, trying to grapple with a breakup that you've experienced or new relationships you're trying to start now. Um, so they're all things that are definitely on, on people's minds and uh, you know, maybe I guess it's a buzzword for a reason, like it really is boundaries, 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 communication, communication, communication. It's it's not just all talk, like those are the things that, that help. Um, our boundaries have been just totally betrayed through this experience. Mm -hmm. So trying to get a sense of how can I create a space in my in my home that gives me a bit of sanctuary or how can I talk to my partner about needing to take a couple hours away from everyone else in the house for a period of time. Um, small things like that, uh, that maybe seem silly in the moment, but are making a huge difference for people. Don't be surprised if you don't feel ready to jump back into your social circle right away. Yeah, I mean, it's really important. I think you're going to hear this from a lot of people. And I, I mean, I hope you do that. It's really important for everyone to take it at their own pace. And like the obvious advice sometimes is the, the most important advice. Um, but no, I mean, we just kind of need to talk about it with each other and normalize it a bit. Like we're all struggling. I know people are talking about struggling to even just have conversations in person. You're like, oh, I, I've lost my like ability to hold a conversation in person, or I'm getting really nervous to be in person with someone for longer than five minutes. And I start, my hands are sweating and I'm clamming up and I don't know how to act anymore. Or like weird, funny spoofs in the grocery store that you kind of forget how to behave. Like this is all something that we're going to go through together. Um, and we kind of just need to talk about it really openly and try not to feel ashamed about it because it is a group experience um, and there's going to be people that are really gung-ho and ready to just jump back into things for better or for worse and there's others that are terrified to go back to socializing the way it once was um, and the truth is somewhere in the middle like the truth is finding the balance and it's just trying to be honest with your loved ones about if you're not ready or what you can handle and being honest with yourself and just taking it really slow there's just no rush like just taking it really slow no matter what you're doing if you need help or more info, here's just one place to go. Please visit spunout.ie and also we have a free 24-7 text support service. Um, it's anonymous, so if you uh, want to talk to someone about how you're feeling, how you're experiencing social anxiety in COVID, you experienced a loss, a breakup, anything, you just text uh, spunout to 50808.